and himself very well. Welcome to Margaret. Uh, we would like to welcome this. Give him a warm welcome. But my main purpose is to introduce you to the concept of private prosecutions. And please, um, if you have and I'll answer all questions. Well, let me rather say, I'll have an answer for all questions. I may not answer your question, but I'll have an answer. So you're welcome to ask. So please, if you have any questions, uh, let's deal with all those questions. Because if I explain to you private prosecutions, you'll just realize that every right-thinking people in South, in South Africa, all right-thinking people in South Africa, will agree that we need uh, a private prosecution capacity to ensure that there are no selective prosecutions, and mainly to ensure equality before the law. Uh, Kali Kiro, the CEO of Afri Forum, about a year and a half ago, out of the blue, phoned me and said he would like to be. So I met with Kali, and it was his vision to prosecute ourselves. Let us prosecute. If the state fails to prosecute, let us do it. In the first month, we received thousands of emails of people reporting cases to us. Thousands all over the country uh, said, please look into this case, please look into that case. Um, and I received thousands of people applying to join our unit. Senior advocates, policemen, black policemen, white policemen, uh, we haven't advertised. But people just sent in their CVs, phoned us, arrived at our office, um, and everybody's excited to join us. So I'm, I'm unbelievably excited about, uh, about this concept. Um, let me just deal with the kind of cases that we would like to take. Now, obviously, people would tell you that in South Africa, everybody knows about high flyers that never been pros prosecuted, uh, and hope that we look at, at, at those cases. We will. But you know, corruption at a local level affects everyone more than corruption at the national level. You know it's wrong, but you don't feel it as you feel corruption, fraud, and mismanagement of funds on a local level. Because that's where we don't get services. That, that really affects us every day. So, I would love to get a matter local level, on a municipal, municipal level, where there's a clear case that's never been prosecuted. Because I really think that that affects everybody sitting here. Um, so, no, we no, we're not only there to look at high flyers and uh, matters that are in the national interest. We really have to look at, at matters at, that's in the local interest. Um, it's just very difficult to get those matters. Now, we've prepared ourselves to be frustrated. Because what is, what's the easiest thing to do? Uh, you, you know that Afri Forum would, would like to look at that matter, and you just don't take an, a decision on that matter at all. You delay a decision for years and years and years. I mean, those are the kind of, of complaints we get. People say, I've, I've reported this matter to the police in 2000. They started investigating. Every time I go there, they say they're still busy, they're still busy, they're still busy. In 2009, they gave it to the prosecutor. Now when I go there, the prosecutor is still busy, still busy, still busy. So, uh, to, to avoid any private prosecution, I'm sure that people will just not take decisions. But we'll deal with that. We will definitely deal with that. If we have to take it to court to ensure that they take decisions, we'll do that. Um, I have... All the support from Afri Forum. One of the main things that made me decide to start this endeavor is when Afri Forum approached me and said, There are no strings attached. You have carte blanche to appoint people to run this office as you want it and to ensure that justice is done. And that was one of the main reasons why I decided to do this. If they have that kind of confidence, not only in me, but in, in, in justice, then why shouldn't I do it? So I want to make it clear that in terms of which matters we'll take, 
in terms of who I'll appoint, in terms of how we'll go about our, our, our jobs, our free forum will not dictate. Now, you all know that we, are, we have one national prosecution authority. Only one. And it should be. There should only be one. In terms of section 179 of the Constitution, only the NPA are allowed to prosecute matters. So every matter that the police will investigate will have to go to the prosecutor, and the prosecutor will have to decide to prosecute or not. Now, if a prosecutor decides not to prosecute, then we have an opportunity to look at the case. It's not that easy. Again, they're in charge. So if we want to prosecute a matter, we have to approach the NPA for, you know, you will never hear a lawyer speak without using some kind of Latin term. So I'm so excited. Uh, and not a prosecutor certificate. So you have to approach them and they have to issue a non prosecutor certificate to allow you to prosecute. Now once you have a non prosecutor certificate, you prosecute in your own name, but it's exactly the same courts, same rules of evidence, same rules of procedure, everything is exactly the same. Same magistrates, same judges. The only difference is that you prosecute in your own name and not in the name of the state. But apart from that, it's exactly the same. If we apply for a non prosecutor certificate, the NPA would have an opportunity to relook the case. So, you know, if they, they, what they'll do is they get all the case dockets in, they'll get the witnesses in, and they'll decide to prosecute or not. If they decide to prosecute, it's a victory for us. Because I don't care who prosecutes the matter. That's not important. The, the importance is there should not be selected prosecution. And the principle of equality before the law should be entrenched and should be followed. So whoever prosecutes, if we ensure that the National Prosecuting Authority then decide to prosecute, it's a victory for us. We have a big corruption problem in the country because we don't understand corruption. And if I say we, I include the courts and I include all prosecutors in this country. We don't understand corruption and because we don't understand corruption, we overcomplicate corruption, we overcomplicate all the charges, uh, we overcomplicate the court cases, um, and in fact, uh, I was just lucky enough to be involved in the celebrity appeal case. I uh, prosecuted the matter, but in the appeal case we went to Bloemfontein, and two brilliant judges, uh, Judge Snyder, she unfortunately passed away, and Judge Leach gave a minority judgment about corruption. But the appeal court made it clear. It's about the intention. If you accept anything from anyone with a corrupt intent, you're guilty of corruption. If you give anything to anyone with a corrupt intention, you, you're guilty of corruption. That's all it is. So if, if I get something from someone and I just think, perhaps he's got ulterior motives, but uh, you know, I think he's guilty of corruption. If you, if, you give some, if you give a benefit to someone, thinking that, not now, but you know, I'll get him on my side in 10 years from now, or five years from now, I'll, I'll need him, and I can phone him at night to come out and come help me to do something, then you're guilty of corruption. It's as easy as that. If we all understand that, and if all investigators and all policemen would understand corruption, as I just explained, it would be so easy to stop it. Because it's just the intention of, of the person that gives a benefit or the intention. So, you don't need two people. In, in the celebrity matter, I don't, I don't think you followed it, but in the celebrity matter, there was a witness with the name of Mr. Agliotti. Now, he, he paid lots of money to the Commissioner of Police Celebrity. And he testified in court, saying, he's my friend, I just gave him money because I wanted to. 
I, Agliotti, never had any intention to bribe him or to, it was never a corrupt intention. The people laughed at us and thought that we lost the case on day one. But the judge was clever enough to realize that whatever Agliotti's intention was in handing over all these benefits, you had to look at the benefit of, of to the attention of the receiver. What was Mr. Salevi's intention when he received the undue benefit? So, really, it's, it's as easy as that. Any, the, the receipt of any undue benefit by a public servant is corruption, finishing law. It's just how it is. So if you understand that, it will be so easy for us not only to uh, open cases, not only to uh, identify corruption, but to deal with corruption. Every person in this country, and I believe everybody sitting here, would agree with me that there should be equality for the law. If someone is prosecuted on these facts for corruption, then somebody else should also be prosecuted without fear, favor, or prejudice for the same facts. And if that's so, who will who could criticize us for prosecuting? 